and welcome to the Alliance for Democracies, the Populist Dialogues. This Populist Dialogues cablecast program's purpose is to advance the mission of the Alliance for Democracy to create a just society based on sustainable, equitable economy. I'm your host, David Delk. Our guest today is Dan Torres. Dan is a political organizer with the SEIU Oregon State Council. SEIU is the Service Employees International Union. Our topic today is the formation of a new coalition called Get Oregon's Money Back. Welcome to the show, Dan. Thank you, David. Thank you for having me here today. Good. Good. I'm glad you're, glad you're here. So tell us, who are we getting Oregon's money back from? So we're getting Oregon's money back from a large group of financial uh, investors, large banks, uh, precisely 16 banks, who were involved in uh, what's called the LIBOR scandal, uh, which occurred between uh, the uh, years of 2006 to 2010. Uh, and so um, our goal is to hopefully try and recoup some assets that were lost due to financial manip manipulation by these 16 banks. Okay, all right. And these 16 banks are international banks, American banks? Or so they're right? international banks. Um, uh, essentially what happened is, I'll give you a little background around LIBOR. So LIBOR is the London Interbank Offer Rate. Uh, essentially it's the rate at which banks uh, lend each other money and borrow money from each other. Um, it's set by a uh, regulator who calls each of these 16 banks to their uh, one of their uh, persons who sets the rate and basically says what's the rate at which you're borrowing money today. Um, it's supposed to be based on uh, financial uh, calculators and tools, um, but for a period of time it was set uh, arbitrarily and it was actually um, suppressed due to a variety of financial reasons uh, by these banks. So instead of setting a fair rate, um, they actually manipulated the rate. Um, and so it was 16 banks, and they're mainly based uh, as international banks. Uh, the big players who have already been found uh, as complacent in, in, in part of this um, would be banks like UBS, uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, um, and, and Barclays, which is a large financial institution. Uh, now where that affects the United States is uh, there's three large financial institutions in the United States that also sit on this 16 bank panel. Uh, those would include Bank of America, uh, uh, Citigroup, and uh, JP Morgan Chase. Oh, okay. And, and those are three of the two big to fail banks. Yes, those are, those are three, uh, you know, uh, three, I mean, those banks are huge institutions within the United States. They tie up a lot of, uh, of assets, a lot of municipalities, governments do business with them. A lot of Americans do business with them um, through, their, through their financial dealings, savings accounts, checkings, loans, mortgages, pretty mm -hmm. much large, mm -hmm. large okay. amount of stuff. Right. And so while the United States was bailing them out, mm -hmm. they were cheating on the reporting <laughs> of this borrowing this, rate. This borrowing weight, rate, exactly. And so, um, you know, we, we've done some research and we looked at the time uh, span specifically between 2006 and 2010, and that's when we found, and that's when it's been known, uh, as this scandal keeps getting larger and larger and more people find out about it, uh, of when they were manipulating the rates. So it was right during that time uh, 2008 was a little term, uh, uh, a little bit of a of a, of a economic downturn, uh, and during it was during that time that these rates were manipulated. Okay, all right. And, and so, uh, when they manipulated the rates, someone benefited, mm -hmm. and someone got hurt. So who benefited? Yeah. So essentially, there was two reasons why these uh, these rates were manipulated by the banks. The first one would be um, when the rates are at a lower amount then that basically sends a signal that the banks are doing well. There's, there's very, ri very low risk. They trust each other. They'll, they'll loan out money at a, at a low rate. So it sends an economic signal to uh, financial markets that the banks are strong and doing well. Now, they were suppressing the rate to give the impression that things were better than, than, than expected. Uh, so there was the benefits from that. But there was also a more insidious uh, uh, manipulation and it was essentially investors and outside firms would call these representatives at these banks and say hey listen you know I really need the rate to come in at this percentage today for either future investments or some sort of portfolio manipulation they said I need it to come in at this rate and the uh, the heads of these banks would essentially call in, in, in the favor and and set the rate at something that would help an outside benefactor uh, so it's you know there's there's emails and call call logs of 
these investment traders calling these banks and saying, I really need the rate to come in at this percentage. So they reap rewards because they were able to predict the market. Uh, you know, it, it, it helped them to, to control where things were selling and buying at. Um, and, and, and it has a, a large, more widespread effect because what people don't realize is LIBOR, uh, the, the rate affects almost every investment. Uh, we're talking billions, trillions of dollars of investments all across the world. So if you've ever gone into like a Wells Fargo or an Advances Credit Union and you see, you know, a percentage, that's where uh, savings, CDs, uh, mortgages, loans are, are a percentage at that day, that's all affected by the LIBOR rate. So by them manipulating the rate of the LIBOR, they're in essence manipulating interest rates across the world because they take their cues from the LIBOR. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this manipulation, who got hurt? So a lot of people got hurt, um, and it's still to, 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 to figure out um, how far-reaching it has been. Uh, so far, the only legal action that has occurred uh, for a lot of these larger banks is, is fines and penalties um, in, in overseas courts. Um, currently, there is um, a group of... of uh, municipalities, I think it's the uh, city of Baltimore, and some some unions from Chicago, uh, firefighters and teachers who are trying to provide legal action. So essentially what happened was anybody that had an account tied to an interest rate um, was essentially cheated out of the percentage because it had a lower value than what it should have at normal market value. Um, here in Oregon, what we found is there's uh, an immense amount of the state's assets that are tied to investment funds. I think the largest one that most people will think of is OPERP, the, the Public Employees Retirement Fund. Uh, there's also um, SAIF Corporation, the uh, accident insurance, um, and then also the veterans account, which provides um, the state with money to provide benefits for, for our retired soldiers. You know, all of that provides money and support for the state, but it does it off of an interest-bearing uh, accrual account. And so those accounts were essentially denied, you know, millions, uh, billions of dollars of what they should have received in growth, but didn't because of it. So here in Oregon, where we have these current attacks on the purse system mm -hmm. and trying to get workers to uh, pay for um, gaps in the, in mm -hmm. the state budget, uh, potentially... Uh, that wouldn't be happening if PERS had actually received the money that they were due? So I'm not going to sit here and say that all of the loss in PERS was due to this. There's financial um, uh, situations uh, besides that. But um, we have found that some of the money that has been taken during this LIBOR scandal does affect those accounts like PERS. Uh, we have rough estimates um, in total from all the assets that we've looked at through the state uh, we estimate, and this is a very conservative estimate, $110 million that should have been going to these state accounts that weren't. And what happens is with these state accounts, especially ones that have uh, benefits or services that need to be paid out of them, that $110 million needs to be found out some other way, exactly like you were saying. Uh, so any of these uh, accounts or any of these investments from the state that didn't perform as they were projected to perform has to be made up in other ways. Okay, so let's go back to the LIBOR mm -hmm. thing. Was nobody watching? So, <laughs> here's here's the funny funny thing is that there's nothing funny about this. Dude. No, and it's, and it's not, and it's not, and it's funny in the sense of how unregulated it is. It's it's literally you think that it would be some sort of complex financial formula, uh, and and grids and spreadsheets. It's literally they call the banks, and I would call you and I'd say, Hey, David, what's your what's your rate of loan today? You tell me it's uh, 2%, and I go, thanks, appreciate it. So what was happening is during this time, uh, a lot of these banks were, were setting their own rates, and eventually there was one bank, there was a banker by the name of Diamond, it's a good name for a banker, mm -hmm. whose rates were, were much higher than the rest of the banks. And there was a regulator in Britain who actually called him and said, you know, I, I noticed your rates are much higher than the rest, why, why is that so? And he goes, well, my rates aren't overly high, they're suppressing their rates, they're lowering, lowering their rates to what they should be. And essentially the response he got from the, the government official was, well, you, don't, you need to have your rates that high. 
So instead of, you know, launching a mass, a mass uh, inquiry, it was more of, well, why don't you get in line with the rest of them who are artificially suppressing their rates? So um, unfortunately, when it comes to large financial industry um, and the regulation here, a lot of it is still done by elite, uh, the, the, the elites of the world and the insiders who, you know, um, have created a complex system that it's hard for most people to, to, to figure out what's going on. Yeah. Um, and so essentially what happened was they, they got caught for this and they paid, you know, uh, a fee, some fines for what they've done, but, you know, it doesn't really go to the large scale of, of the effect that it had on all the, the assets and interests. So uh, the, 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 the ability for them to really be called to question has is, is been a challenging one because the regulation is just not there uh, because this is a system that's been in place for, for a long time. Um, and, and, you know, it's one of those questions where people cry, you know, you don't want to regulate the banks because they're the ones that, yeah. you know, <laughs> provide I, the money. I, yeah, right. They're, yeah. they're the job creators. Right? Yeah, they yeah. are. <laughs> they are. <laughs> right, yeah. So, um, this is just a huge, huge story. Yes. And it made the news front page for a few days mm -hmm. and, and back pages for a few weeks. Yep and that has largely disappeared. Yeah. Well, why? So it's, it's kind of a hard thing to, to put your thumb on because unless you do the research, so the research that we're doing, uh, we conducted that started this, this, this group, uh, which is uh, getorgansmoneyback.org, is that we are one of the few in the state to actually start looking at all the assets that would have been gaining interest. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done, and it's one of those financial things where it's very complex. And so there was the initial stories about it, um, and it's such a complex issue that a lot of people, they read it, and they're like, you know, that's really awful. But the question is, what do we do? How do we have access to actually doing something about it? Um, so I, I mentioned lawsuits earlier that some counties and municipalities have filed through uh, RICO antitrust um, Racket, avenues, racketeering, racketeering RICO mm -hmm. antitrust uh, avenues. Those have actually been thrown out. Uh, there's plans to keep appealing for those, um, but they've actually been thrown out by higher courts um, and they continue to go along. Uh, now what we feel is we have a unique opportunity through um, security exchange actions of filing suits with the SEC uh, for manipulation in, in this in this case. So it's, it's one of those issues where <coughs> you know, uh, it's been brought to people's attention. There was the initial outrage, but then people kind of, you know, at some point, what, what can we do? Yeah, and it's really, really, really hard for mere mortals such as myself <laughs> <laughs> to understand. To understand, oh, yeah. Right, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's, but that's the way that they want it to be, is, uh -huh. is you, you just understand the necessity for, for, for them to do something like this is, is you know, a rejoinder. But it's, it's, it's a very simple case, you know. We've got state assets that should have been performing at this percentage. They didn't. And there was manipulation by people who were doing it for financial gain and to create a false sense of security within the system. And so it's, it's actually quite simple, um, you know. And so we actually do need to applaud the treasurer's office uh, and, and the attorney general's office. Uh, so what we did uh, at SEIU is we, we, um, we started doing uh, public information requests for all the state assets during the period of time, 2006 to 2010, um, that would be affected by an interest rate. And uh, in conjunction with the, uh, the state's bank, the custodial bank, State Street Bank, um, in the treasurer's office, we actually looked at all the assets that were affected by this interest rate, and that's where we came up with the estimate of $110 million. Um, and we say it's a conservative estimate because we were only given basis points um, on what could have been actualized through the investments. So in some cases, we were told three basis points, which is basically three decimal points. Um, so anywhere from 100 to 99, or 999. And we took a low end on that estimate. Uh, so it could be more money that could potentially have been lost, but it's not until legal proceedings and, and full disclosure do we do we see all the assets. Okay. But and so in Oregon, what's the estimate dollar dollar amount? It's $110 million. $110 yeah, million. That, the $110 million is just for Oregon alone. Um, and 
so this 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 scandal this issue started you know when we started tracking it uh, when we went back all the way to 2006. Uh, so the problem that we're facing right now and the reason why we started uh, GetOrgansMoneyBack.org is that in order for us to, to try and recoup some of those losses, we have to start moving on legal actions uh, quick, sooner rather than later. Um, there's a legal, um, uh, a legal window that we have going back to five years. It's not a statute of limitation, but it's a similar uh, legal uh, window that says we can only go back five years um, to, to try and gain and to try and sue for recoup losses. I wonder, I wonder who wrote that rule. <laughs> Probably somebody <laughs> who wanted to protect their uh, right. the things they're doing. Uh, so essentially what we um, created is if you go to the website, getorgansmoneyback.org, um, there is a ticker that shows the amount of money that Oregon continues to lose in addition to that $110 million for every month that we don't do anything. So now that it's now the 1st of June, we've lost May of five years back as something that we can claim losses for. Uh -huh. And each month that we don't go forward with legal action is a month that we lose access to trying to recoup some of the losses. So one of the big parts about it, like I said, the, uh, the treasurer's office has been great in working with us, the State Street Bank, Attorney General, um, has been great and what one of the things that we're trying to do is we're trying to call upon the governor is the highest form of office within the state to use his 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 authority and his bully pulpit to really call to question why aren't we doing more about this okay um, talk about the State Street Bank I've never heard of the State Street Bank so the State Street Bank is the custodial bank of Oregon they basically handle the the state's assets you know when the treasurer decides to, to make investments or you know accounts need to be uh, dealt with State Street Bank is the one who who watches over the state's funds um, and the, this is a, a private bank it's not a public bank uh, it's it's uh, it's an organization that runs the the state's bank. Or oh, it basically state's handles the fund. state's money. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, so they they do uh, investments and and they're the ones that that were able to. They're actually the ones that that actually looked at the percentage points and and saw where it was affected in the state's funds. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's a financial okay. institution that handles the state's money. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And so the focus now is on convincing. The governor of Oregon yeah. to do something. Yeah. Uh, and has he given any indication that where he's at with this? <laughs> not, not any indication at all. So we, um, we, one of the things you'll notice when you go to the website, get money's Oregon or get Oregon's money back org, is there's a petition uh, that we currently have a couple thousand signatures on um, that we plan on on delivering that really calls on the governor to use his his you know his voice at the top of, of, of our state's elected uh, to really do something about it because until he directs and starts focusing our state agencies to look more into this and, and to investigate strong legal actions you know we continue to lose more money uh, that I mean at this point the state could probably use uh, yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> they could use it right yeah 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 and so you are SEIU is part of a coalition yeah so we've started a coalition of concerned citizens we had our first press conference uh, a couple weeks back actually in front of Bank of America downtown uh, in uh, in southwest port or northwest Portland um, and so the coalition is a group of community support advocates um, and fellow unions, uh, AFSCME Council 75, Oregon Education Association, OSEA, um, um, uh, and then other, other community groups uh, like Working Families Party, um, Partnership for Safety and Justice, um, and a big supporter um, that's helped us give a, a business voice is the Main Street Alliance, who actually oh, yes. had a, uh, a business leader come and speak at our press conference of the fact that, you know, Every day, business leaders and small business owners have to play by the rules. Why shouldn't large financial institutions? Uh -huh. So, well, yeah, <laughs> they don't play by the rules because they get to manipulate. Exactly, them. they they, get they to just set don't the rules. feel like a yeah right. Yeah. And, 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 if, uh, and if they do get in trouble, they pay you know small fees and fines through through uh, financial penalties, and and then they go along their day. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, right, and it's yeah. just the cost of standard cost of business for them exactly right. and, yeah. and you know when you're yeah. denying people billions of dollars across the world you know you can afford to pay half a million and you know or a million or half a billion in, in uh, financial right yeah and, and so the the three American banks were which which were they Bank of America uh -huh. uh, Citigroup and JP Morgan Chase okay okay yeah. and have any of those three 
banks paid anything? No, as, as of this point, there has been no legal procedure within the United States that has gone to, to trial. Um, like I said, the, there has been um, some attempts to, to sue under, under uh, RICO laws, uh, which unfortunately have been thrown out in higher courts, but uh, those parties involved plan on continuing to, uh, to appeal those, those procedures. And that's why we took the unique opportunity of, of going through the SEC, through securities violations, um, because you know these are manipulated investment funds. That's mm -hmm. what the SECs are supposed to be there for to okay. hold those those groups accountable. Okay, and ultimately, well, well let, let me continue on the on the fines thing. Uh, you know, uh, internationally, because there were sixteen banks, only mm -hmm. three were American. Have any of those other? Uh, let me do the math real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Have any of those 13 other others, uh, yeah. 13 other banks been fined so or otherwise penalized? Yeah, there, there's currently um, pending um, lawsuits and investigations, but so far three of the larger banks, um, uh, RBS, Royal Bank of Scotland, UBS, and Barclays, which is huge international banks, have um, complied with international investigators, played, paid fines, and, and paid fees uh, for their involvement in this scandal. But it's one of those hard things where you have to do a lot of qualitative research uh, to figure out exactly what what was was stolen because it's it's a theoretical uh, assumption of you know the rate should have been this but it was actually this mm -hmm. so it's a lot different than if I took five dollars out of your pocket yeah. you know it's, it's investments you know I, you could say well with inflation the five dollars you stole is actually ten dollars you know yeah. uh -huh. um, so it, it's a lot harder than just pinning on you took a hundred million dollars from us so that's why it, it took us a while to do a little bit of this research and uh, and figure out because you have to look at every account that has an interest rate to it and then count what it should have been uh, and what it actually was. Oh, okay. so. All right. um, are you looking for other organizations to join the coalition? Yes, definitely. So um, we're currently in the process of building support from other community groups. We think that this is an issue that crosses very broad scope of, of uh, ideology and belief because essentially anyone in Oregon who relies on public funding, anyone in Oregon who believes in fairness and justice on, on any basis uh, is, is a group that we feel should be interested in this uh, because every penny gone from Oregon is a penny gone from other vital services that, that help here in Oregon. Uh, and, and any organization that, you know, even, even if they themselves have investment accounts or, or, or have, you know, a lot of larger groups have endowments that, you know, pay off of interest and that could have been affected by it. So we're looking for a large coalition of individuals to start. And like I said, this is sort of like the largest thing. I mean, Oregon's sort of the vanguard. It's the front force. I mean, this is the first place that we've done this type of yeah. research to really look at this and see the total assets that were affected to the entire state you know these other lawsuits were individual organizations so you know firefighters um, a pension fund for a certain fighter fighters union you know are involved in this but we, this is the first research that's been done of the entire state okay uh, and so we're hoping to set the stage for the rest of the United States uh, for other institutions and other governments to to look at their their own investments and see what could have possibly been lost okay um, all right yeah. and the, the, that was going to be my next question okay, sorry. is you know, are, are the other states doing something along the same line so like I mentioned it's it's down to certain municipalities and, and different interest groups no nothing as large as what we were trying to get moving with uh -huh. get Oregon's money org to look at the total state assets involved uh, with it um, and you know along those lines we think that there's a larger call here to question of of our, our complacency and our, our continued dealing with, with institutions that continue to hurt the state. You know, the, the treasurer's office currently is going through litigation around uh, assets backed through mortgage fraud um, and recouping some of the funds through like, uh, like Countrywide, and et cetera. And, you know, the fact that these, these banks have manipulated uh, our state and many other states in such ways, yet states still continue to do business with them, which, you know, it's, <laughs> we, we get a small fraction of a, of a fine or a penalty from them and we slap them on the wrist and then they go along their way and, you know, months, months down the road, we, uh, we get another CD from them or a loan or a savings. Right, yeah. Uh, 
Is your organization or is SEIU uh, supporting a public bank for the state of Oregon? Um, I'm not sure what the uh, what the plans are for that. Uh, uh, we're mainly just looking at the regulation and, and uh -huh. what what happened around LIBOR. Uh, right. So. Yeah, which is very very worthy by itself. It yeah. seems like you, yeah. what you just said, it would make sense if you're continue to make you know, do business with those banks that have been messing with you. Yeah. That maybe you want to create your own bank. The state and, needs to do something that that gets them away from these bad actors. I mean, you know, and and not just with what happens with the state. We know that Bank of America has been tied to to bad mortgage practices. Um, they've also been tied to issues around student loans where they've been less than friendly and less than uh, straightforward with, with people with student loans, which is one of the largest growing groups of debts in our country. You right. know, okay. people are just shackled with it. Right, yeah. So, so um, you got like a uh, three quarters of a minute final <laughs> roundup statement. Uh, so, I mean, my roundup statement is basically that this is this is a situation where money has been taken from the state, and for us to sit here and not do anything about it sets a precedent where we are basically showing that we're going to let them get away with it, and we need to call upon the governor. People need to go to uh, getoregonsmoneyback.org, sign the petition, and use their voice as citizens of our state to say we're not going to stand for this, and we're not going to take it when we have the largest class sizes when we are cutting state services we need to do everything we can to get the money back that rightfully belongs to our state excellent thank you very much dan thank you dan really right. appreciate it. so our guest today has been dan torres a political organizer with the oregon service employees international union council here in oregon we've been talking about a newly formed coalition named get oregon's money back Please visit their website at www.getorgansmoneyback.org to learn more and don't forget to sign that petition. And if you're a representative of an organization might like to be involved, uh, by all means go there and contact them and see if you can join the coalition. So don't forget you can watch Populist Dialogues on YouTube. Go to youtube.com, search for Populist Dialogues, click on the result with the Statue of Liberty icon to view all our shows and to subscribe. If you are watching on YouTube, maybe you can help us expand our viewership. Just contact your local cable access station and see what is required for you to sponsor a weekly broadcast for our program. Most local stations are looking for good material and will welcome the suggestion. And they can pick up the program at no cost to them at pegmedia.org. The mission at the Alliance for Democracy is to end corporate domination, establish true democracy, create a just society based on a sustainable, equitable economy. Learn more, visit our national website at thealliancefordemocracy.org or our Portland website at afd-pdx.org. I want to thank our volunteers who have donated their time to get us on the air again. So thank you to Roger Bates, Joan Horton, Beth Kerwin, Janet Morris, and Tom Thomas. And thanks to all of you for watching. I hope that we'll see you again next week. Bye.